welcome to another session on trigonometry friends so this in this session we are going to discuss another problem i know heights and distances uh, is one of the topics where kids struggle a lot so the only way to deal with it is getting exposed to multiple types of problems and trying on your own so even if you are watching this session i would requ request you to uh, pause the video and uh, see the question try to solve it and i am very sure you'll be able to solve it but just in case if you're not able to you can then go through this session so here is the solution to this question the question says from the top of a cliff 200 feet high so the the height of the cliff is 200 feet feet high the angles of depression of the top and bottom of a tower obviously now if you see there's a 200 feet high and there are and it is talking about the angles of depression of the top and bottom of a tower that means some there is a cliff so you have let us say this is a very steep cliff okay and uh, you are here standing over here let us say you are standing on the top of the cliff and let us, it is given that the cliff height from the ground is how much 100 100 sorry 200 feet high now so let us say this is the ground level so this is the ground level and and there is a tower somewhere tower somewhere let us say this tower is this here now obviously the tower will be having a height less than 200 feet why because you are seeing both the the top and the bottom as a depression isn't it so if you see there it has been given that the angle of depression so what is angle of depression you draw a horizontal line from wherever you are watching observing and now try to connect the point which you are observing so let us say this is the point this is the top of the tower let me say this tower is pq okay this tower is pq now you are trying to you are trying to uh, see or look at p from let us say this is the height of the tower what is the height of the uh, sorry cliff let the cliff be rs okay so this is rs is the cliff and uh, uh, and pq is the tower just for you not to be confused i am deleting the diagram of the cliff which i drew earlier right so now this rs represents the cliff now it's given that the angle of depression of the tower's height the top point is 30 degrees isn't it so let us call this as alpha and alpha is 30 degrees and it is also given that the angle of depression of the bottom of the bottom of the tower is how much beta so this angle of depression is beta and this is equal to 60 degrees right now it is it is asked to find the height of the tower let us say h and let me also rename rs as capital h and it is given as 200 feet okay so now we will you we will apply the basic trigonometric ratios to find out the height h now what to do first of all if you observe if you observe uh, closely this angle is also nothing but beta why because this is alternate interior angle if this is let's say rt so if you see rt is parallel to qs isn't it so hence angle trq is equal to angle rqs and s is definitely 90 degrees right it is perpendicular cliff is always perpendicular to the ground trq is rqs and hence what do we get we get this is equal to beta is equal to 60 degrees this is one of the um, first step and now what what do you do now you drop a perpendicular onto rs from p let us say this is u this point is u right just to differentiate it from h let me write it let me write it with black so this is p u and h was given to be this is h is 200 feet which is rs okay so hence let me mention that here as well so h is rs is equal to 100 sorry 200 feet okay now why did you why did i drop uh, a perpendicular pu from p onto rs is simply this that one of the right angle triangles i could find rqs yeah but i have to use this alpha 30 degrees somewhere right 
Now, either you could have dropped this perpendicular, that is perpendicular from here on to RT, or you could have dropped PU perpendicular to RS. Both would fetch you the same result. Now, wh what happens if I drop PU as a perpendicular to RS, then automatically by the same logic, which we have adopted for beta, this angle is 30 degree alternate interior angle because PU is also parallel to TR. So this line is parallel to this line. So hence this angle will be equal to this angle. Uh, what will be this height? RU. RU, RU will be nothing but capital H minus small h. Yes or no? Right? So hence I can say RU is equal to capital H minus h. And why am I doing this? Because I am interested in triangle R U P because I can see a 90 degree. I know an angle alpha. So hence I can you and I can use this information. And especially when I am sub when I am, you know, uh, I'm, I have to find out small h and capital H is given. So I would adopt that ratio. What ratio should I adopt? So I will go for tan of alpha. Why tan and not sine and cos is simply this because if you use sine and cos, then P R this 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 length will be used but it is unknown to you isn't it what is known and what is common to both the right angle triangles if you notice there are two right angle triangles triangle p u r and triangle r q s and in both one thing is common that is the length this length q s let it be y so if this is y then p u is also y and why is this because p q s u is a rectangle isn't it? It's a rectangle. So this is y. So this one will also be y. So hence we will exploit this information. So tan alpha is nothing but h minus small h upon y. Simply this, right? And hence the let, let us say this is equation number one. Equation number two is for the next triangle. Tan beta will be nothing but you can guess this is h upon y. So adjacent divided by opposite. Isn't it? So hence, this is equation number two. Now let us see how many unknowns are here. So we know h, alpha and beta, but what are unknown is this small h and this small y. So we have two equations and two variables. So we can eliminate one. So what should we well eliminate? Definitely y because that's not needed. So hence from one, we can say y is equal to h minus h upon tan alpha. And from second equation, you can say y is equal to capital H upon tan beta. Isn't it? So hence, you can equate these two new equations now and you can say which two. So now you can equate these two y because both are equal to y. So h minus h upon tan alpha will be equal to capital H upon tan beta. And what information do I need? I need h small h, right? So hence, this is h by tan alpha minus h by tan alpha. So I separated the fraction. This is equal to h upon tan beta. And why am I doing this? Because I need this h isolated at one place. So let us say h upon tan alpha will be given by h upon tan alpha, capital H upon tan alpha minus capital H upon tan of beta. Isn't it? So hence, small h will be equal to tan alpha times h upon tan alpha. Rather, you can take h as common as well from both of these. So hence, you can say h is taken common. So h tan alpha, 1 minus tan alpha divided minus 1 minus 1 by tan alpha minus 1 by tan beta. Sorry, this will be beta. Beta. Now we know all the given quantities. So what is h? So now let us deploy values. So if you notice, I am deploying the values only in the last step. This will eliminate as many calculation mistakes as possible. So I don't need to. And, and the other advantage is if you make a mistake in any one of the steps earlier, it will not be translated down under, right? So it will be, it is good enough if you are doing it in terms of variables. So tan, so h is 200. Tan alpha, let us see what is alpha value. So alpha was 30 and beta was 60, isn't it? It's it's given. Alpha is 30 and beta is 60. So now it is nothing but tan of 30 degrees into 1 upon tan of 
30 degrees minus 1 upon tan of 60 degrees okay so hence what is the value 200 and tan of 30 is 1 upon root 3 please remember the values it will help you solve the problems quickly 1 upon root 3 minus 1 upon root 3 hmm? so hence it is 200 into 1 upon root 3 and then it is root 3 minus 1 upon root 3 so hence if you see this is 200 into 1 upon root 3 then this is if you multiply this will become root 3 square so take LCM minus 1 by root 3 isn't it so hence the answer is something like this 1 by root 3 and root 3 square is 3 3 minus 1 is 2 and there is a root 3 so this will be 200 into 2 by 3 so the answer would be 133.33 feet right so a quick recap what did we do we drew a diagram representative diagram and deployed or uh, showed all the information in the diagram itself then we tried to find out two right angle triangles where we could utilize the given data so and then we use the concepts of geometry so that uh, you know the put two parallel lines and hence alternate interior angles all these were found out and then finally equations basis the trigonometric ratios were found out and the equations were solved unknown was eliminated and finally the known quantity was arrived at